The reason I wanted to join the military was because I grew up in a small town. It was near a Marine Corps Air Base, and we had a lot of, uh, a lot of Marine friends, and I just re really remember being impressed with them. Just the way they carried themselves, the way that they were always about something bigger than themselves. And I was fortunate to grow up in a household where my parents always made it sure that it was crystal clear to me and my brothers that freedom wasn't free. And our friends that were in the service, they were the ones that went out and made sure that we had the ability to say what we wanted to say, that we had the ability to pray how we wanted to pray, that we had the ability to pursue the things that we wanted to pursue, and that it wasn't like this everywhere around the rest of the world. So I started out just joining the Navy, but for me, I joined the Navy the week after 9-11. And so that was, it wasn't just like most, a lot of people I think that just go join the military. There's very few people that decide to join the military the week after a huge tragedy, knowing full well that the U.S. will be involved in a conflict. So for me, I went immediately to boot camp, then from boot camp to Gunner's Mate A School, and then directly to SEAL training. Each deployment was different with Eli being gone. So the first one, we were married, but we didn't have any children. So I think that was easier, but it was harder because of my first one, I didn't know anybody. I was in a city that I had no friends, and then I had a, I had a new job. It's hard because they're off saving the world, and you're at home waiting, figuring out, okay, is he gonna come back? And how do I make it fun when he does? So when Eli got back from his second deployment, he decided that he um, wanted to have a hobby. About three or four months prior to that, he received a gift from his brother. It was a bottle opener from the Philippines. It was very generic, it wasn't painted or anything. It was just a really cool bullet that opened up your beer. So he decided to take that bullet into his garage. He spray painted it black and he put his Punisher patch. I would do my regular job in the military during the day as an instructor. And then I would come home and I would work on the bottle breachers at night. And oftentimes, early into the next morning, you know, two, three in the morning, then I'd wake up, help my wife get the kids ready for school, go to the Navy job as an instructor, come home, rinse, repeat, no weekends. It was just balls to the wall all the time. He took our handle off of our broom he drew a cut over it and he put it over the bullet and he Dremel tooled out what we have now is our patented design for our cut because our bottle openers don't look like any other bullet bottle openers. And he took that to his platoon at SEAL Team 3 and they just fell in love with it. They're like, I want five, I want 10. And it was around Christmas time. It was like October of 2012. So after he decided and realized that it was something that he could sell, he took it to me and he said, hey, could you sell these online? And at the time I had my own business and I was really busy. From the moment I started focusing on it, there was just this buzz around it. Like people just freaked out every time they saw them. And so it wasn't like I was getting out of the military with this, you know, with this hell bent on being an entrepreneur. I was praying about it. And if God would have sent me, you know, to Zimbabwe to sell curly straws, that's probably what I would have done. I started trying to do the very best I could with it with a very limited skill set. Like I don't have a fancy MBA from Harvard, right? A lot of the stuff that we've implemented here, we've taken directly from the military and life experience and just trying to build the best team that we can. That's kind of the origin of Bottle Breacher is prayer. Christmas Eve, December of 2012, I threw it up on Etsy and I realized really quick what we had was not actually a bullet bottle opener, it was a Grimsman gift because I marketed it to people instead of as a thing. And then it just took off. So within two months, three months, we had a couple hundred dollars, which was the goal, is to have date, date night money. And then six months, we had a couple thousand dollars. And then he realized really quick, I'm onto something, but what we don't have is we don't have a way to personalize them. He actually sold his Big Dog Chopper his pride and joy, his baby, he got from his second deployment as a gift and he sold it to buy our first laser engraver. Once we sold that, we were making 20, 30 grand out of our one car garage and that's when we knew that we had something and that's when we applied to Shark Tank. Sometimes at the, during the night I needed just to get a, catch a breather so sometimes I would go walk around San Diego Bay. So I was walking around San Diego Bay and I was kind of dialoguing with myself, just inter, internal conversation and I was asking myself if I did get the opportunity to go on Shark Tank, 
what, what would I, how would I answer Mark Cuban if he asked me that question that I just saw him ask somebody else on the TV? How would I answer Rod, Robert Hershebeck if he asked me and Jen the same question that I just saw him? And I was going through, I was, you know, having this internal dialogue with myself and it was so cool because God told me, he said, Eli, I'm the biggest shark of all. We aired on Shark Tank in November of 2014. It was a crazy whirlwind event experience because the month prior he got out of the military. So we went from SEAL teams and me telling people that he painted ships for a living to um, being on TV, national TV overnight. I'll make you an offer. I like the story, it's very simple. I've made money with military guys because they're focused. I'll do it for 20%. Mark, would you be interested in going in with either of the other sharks? I'd be interested in going in with Kevin. Okay. Um, so, Mark, you just want to split it 75 yeah, each? We'll just 10, split it. Yeah, 10 we'll points just split each? It. So, what do you say? If Let us split it. Go to so work. It's, it's $150,000 for 20%. Mark and I each get 10. You guys are awesome! Oh, Let's do it! All right. Yes! Thank you so much you. for the opportunity. We really appreciate it. Why are you standing here? Go to work. We got <laughs> all right. Get on it. Thanks, guys. Our strategy here at Bottle Breacher has, you know, it's evolved like every single business and you really try and you really try and hone into what you feel like your customers really want. What we've tried to do is we've tried to take military gear and turn it into something functional and useful that can be a gift. Most of the stuff we do takes something that is has a military theme to it and makes it barware or a cool gift. Then a lot of it we have the ability to personalize it and make it that extra special gift. We are a veteran-owned brand, and we make everything we do right here in the USA. It's not easy to make stuff in the USA. Anybody that does it understands that. Labor is more expensive here. Raw materials are more expensive here. This country means so much to me. And I tell people all the time that my country will always be more important to me than my company. And that's why the American flag is on everything that we do. Now that we're here five years after starting this company, I actually feel really blessed to have gotten to work with my wife. It wasn't easy by any stretch of the imagination, and still there's many times where it's not easy, but it's been really cool watching the sacrifice that Jen has made to help us build this company because um, she actually quit a business that she was running herself and doing really well at to come help and support and supplement our efforts to grow this company and this brand. Faith is a huge part of us working together. I feel like it's why we are married and it's why we stay married. It's how this business is run and it could mean that tomorrow we won't have it anymore. And that's okay, and that's what I love about it is that I'm not making the decision. Someone that knows my path is choosing and I am following as best as I can. And so for us, it's everything. Faith is what makes us who we are and it's what keeps Bottle Breacher going. The only way for me to grow this business and to build this business has been to bring on smarter, more talented people than myself and entrust them with those departments. Once we made enough money, I started to realize the dream. And then once we were on Shark Tank and other people saw it, then I understood. But even walking on Shark Tank, I was like, I think they were gonna laugh at us. Because it's bottle openers. But that's what's cool about it is that there's a bigger picture and a bigger story behind it than just opening your beer.